So I decided to do something a little different for this video. I think drones are great tools for capturing all sorts of cool and creative content. But if you combine that with a little bit of editing, it opens up so much more opportunity for creativity. And it's also something I think about when I'm out flying. You know, I may want to capture certain shots because I know they'll work well with certain editing techniques. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I created some of the title effects from the opening sequence. And really, anyone can follow along with what I'm doing in this video using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Now, I can't show you how I did everything in that opening sequence, at least not in this video. But I am going to show you a couple different ways to do the title transitions. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many other cool things you can do that really aren't that difficult. But let's not waste any more time and jump into DaVinci Resolve and go through some title transitions. All right, I have DaVinci Resolve open and I've already imported the two clips I'm going to use in this example. Now, before I start, because my clips may be filmed in different frame rates, I just want to make sure the frame rate of my clips and timeline all match. So I can click on the list icon to see the file info for my clips. And if I scroll over, you can see both clips are 29.97 frames per second. So if I go over here and open up my project settings, I can see the frame rate is currently set to 24 frames per second. So I'll adjust my timeline to match the clips and then save the changes. Now, if your clips were different frame rates, you can always adjust them by right clicking on the clip and selecting clip attributes and here you can adjust the clip frame rate to match your project settings. I didn't need to change it, so I'll just cancel out of this. Now we're ready to start. So I'll drag the first clip into my timeline. And this clip is going to be a lot longer than I need, so I'm going to trim it back a bit first. I also want to check the speed because I think the movement is probably going to be too slow. So I'm going to speed it up. And I can easily do that by right clicking on the clip and selecting read time controls. Or you could just hit control R. Then I want to click on the arrow beside 100% and go to change speed and I'm going to try 200%. And let's see how that looks. All right, that's much better. Now we're ready to add some text. So I'll go up here and click on effects to open my effects library. And then I'll go down to titles. And I'm going to use text plus, so I'll drag that onto my timeline. Now, the default duration is 5 seconds, and I want to shorten that. So I can right click on it and select change clip duration. Now I'm going to set it to 4 seconds. To finish setting up the text, I'll go up here and open my inspector. And then I'm going to change the text to something simple like intro. I also want to change the font to something that will work a little better. And I'm going to make it bold just to maximize the area I have to fly into. Now I want to resize the text so it takes up more of the screen. That should be good. Okay, now that I have the text somewhat set up, in order for the effect to work, the text has to be on the track below the clip. So I can select the clip and drag it above my text and then I'll just bring them both back down. For now, I'm just going to disable this clip by clicking on this icon, just so I can still see my text. And then I'm going to need to go up to this menu, and I'm going to select Dynamic Zoom. And two boxes will appear. The green one is where the zoom will start, and the red one is where the zoom will end. So I need to swap these. You can do that by just dragging the boxes in and out, but another way to do it is go over to the inspector, and I'll need to change the menu from title to settings. And then I can go to dynamic zoom and then click swap and you'll see the boxes swap positions. That way the green box will be right on the outer edge where I want it. Okay, now I'm going to select the red box and I'm going to drag it right into the center. That should be good. Now I want to zoom in because I want to center the zoom window inside the text. And to do this, I'll need to go back over to my inspector and go into layout because I want to adjust the X position of the text to line it up with the zoom window. All right, that should be good. Now I can zoom out. 
I'll click here to get out of the dynamic zoom setup. I'll re-enable the clip. And now to get the text to appear in the foreground, I'll need to select my clip and go back over to the inspector. And I'm gonna change the composite mode from normal to multiply. And now the first title transition is almost complete. So we'll have a look. Okay, we don't want the screen to go black after we pass through the text. So to fix this, we'll have to go back to the first frame where the screen turns black and we'll cut the clip here. We can do this by selecting the razor tool or what I prefer to do is use the keyboard shortcut and hit control B, which will cut the selected clip at the playhead. And now with the last part of this clip selected, we'll go back over to the inspector and change the composite mode from multiply to normal. And that should fix it. So let's check it out. All right, now that we're done with the first title transition, I'm gonna show you another version, except this is gonna be a transition from one scene into another. And in order to get that to work, we're gonna to have to do something a little bit differently, which you'll see here in a moment. And outside of the fact that I wanted to show you different methods of doing this, I could have used the same method to do the first transition as I'm gonna use for this second one. But to start off, I'm gonna duplicate this text and I can do that by selecting the text, holding Alt and then dragging it over. Now I wanna place this text on top of the clip. And you can see we still have our dynamic zoom settings. I'm gonna change the text to something different. For this one, I'll use transition. But since it's a longer word, I'm gonna change the font as well to something a little more condensed. I'm also gonna to need to go into the layout and recenter the text. And I can do that by double clicking on center. Now that the text is centered, I can resize it. And then I wanna go over and check the dynamic zoom to make sure the zoom window is still centered on the text. So that looks good. And now I'm ready to bring in the second clip. So I'll place it on top of this text. And I'm also gonna to wanna to speed this one up like I did the first one. So I'll go into read time controls and change speed and I'm gonna set it to 200%. Then I'm gonna to wanna to find the spot roughly where I wanna transition into. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of room to allow for the transition. That should be good. So I'll trim it back to here and then I'll move the playhead back up and I wanna line it up with the first frame of the text. And then I'm gonna move the clip back and line it up so the first frame of the clip lines up with the playhead. And just to make sure they're lined up, I'll disable the clip to make sure I see the text behind it. And this is where it gets a little different from the last transition. If I were to change the composite mode like we did in the last one to multiply, this is what happens. And I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is instead of selecting multiply, I'm gonna select foreground. That may not seem to have done much because we're just back to the clip over the text. But now I'm gonna select the text and I'll go over to the inspector. I'll need to go into settings and then I'm gonna go down to composite and I'm gonna change the composite mode of the text to alpha. And now we have what we want. So let's check it out and see what this looks like. That's pretty good, except it doesn't look very good when the text abruptly appears on the screen. But I left a little extra room at the beginning of the clip on purpose because I wanna duplicate this text and I'm gonna use the first one to create a sort of fly-in effect for the text. And then I'll use the second one for the transition. So I'm gonna to wanna to select the first text and go over to the inspector and I'm gonna turn off the dynamic zoom. And then I'm gonna to wanna to go back to the first frame because I'm gonna use a keyframe to set the size on the first and last frame of this text. Once I'm lined up with the first frame, I'll go over to the inspector. In the title menu, under text, I'll set a keyframe on the size. And then I'll set the size of the text on this frame to almost zero, just so it's not really visible. And then I'll move the playhead to the end and make sure I'm lined up right with the last frame. 
Now for this last frame, I want to match the size of the other text. So I can check that and I can see it's set to 0.311. So I want to set the size on the last frame to the same, 0.311. And now I just want to check that the transition from the first text to the second looks pretty smooth. And I think that's pretty good. So now let's have a look and see what the whole sequence looks like. And that's pretty much what I was going for. But now I want to quickly show you a few ways to change this up a bit. So say I wanted to get the text to fly in more from the shoreline. I'll need to go to the first frame of the text where I set that initial keyframe. And I can easily get there by clicking on this arrow to go to the next keyframe. Once I'm on the first frame, then I'll go into layout and I'm going to set a keyframe on the X, Y position. And now I can adjust the Y position to move the text up towards the shoreline. You can barely see it there. If you can't see it, you could always make it bigger until you get it into position. That should be good. And once I got that set, now I can go to the last frame of this text and just make sure I'm on the last frame. And then I'm going to set the Y value back to 0.5, which is the same as the transition text. So now let's see what that looks like. Okay, that was all right, but you can notice a slight change in the movement of the text. And that's because the text flying in is moving at a shallower angle than the text in the transition. So to try and fix that, I could go into the dynamic zoom settings and try moving the zoom window up a bit. To do that, I'll enable the dynamic zoom settings and I'll select the zoom window and then I'm going to move it to the upper part of the S and see if that helps. So I'll get out of the dynamic zoom settings so I can play this section through again just to see if that looks any better. Well, it wasn't totally smooth, but I definitely like the look of that one better. So with that changed, now I want to see what the whole sequence looks like. Well, I think that turned out pretty good, at least for just quickly setting it up. You could always spend a little more time playing around with things to get it looking just right. But there's one last thing I wanted to show you, and that's how you can easily change the speed of your transitions. And you can do that by simply shortening the length of your transition text. And just to show you, I'll shorten this text transition to two seconds, and the first one, I'll adjust to three seconds. I'll also need to drag this cut over to line up with the end of the text. And that's it, simple as that. I'll just let this one play through, but that's it for this video. So take this, play around with it, and come up with new cool and creative titles and transitions. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.